Hi there! Welcome to my channel. I prepare videos to help my students score better in their STPM MSD paper. I hope my video can be helpful for you too. Well, today we are going to talk about solving polynomial equation. In this first part of my video, I will be talking about factoring polynomials. Now, whenever you get a polynomial, for example, something in like this equation, you need to determine if there is any common monomial factors, or we call it the greatest common factor. Well, if you look at this case, you will find that there is x and y which we can factorize out. So, when we bring it out, for this case, we have x, 1x here, 2x there, so we bring out 1. We have y squared there and y squared there, so we bring out y squared. So, we already factorize this polynomial. Next is we need to determine if the problem to be factored is a binomial and it fits one of the following situation. Let's look at the first case where we have difference of two squares. For example, we have this question. Now when we check 9x squared minus 25y squared, it fits this situation. So we can change that to 3x squared and 5y squared. Once we get that, we can our a will be 3x and our b will be 5y. So we can put that into this format. So we will have 3x plus 5y for the first part and 3x minus 5y for the second factor. Next thing is we have to determine if there is sum of two cubes. For example, if we have cases like this, 8x cubed minus 27y cubed, so we check whether they can perform in this type of formula. So if we can transform that, that will give us 2x cubed plus 3y cubed. Then our a is 2x, our b is 3y. We put them into the formula like this, where the placing of a is 2x and the placing for b is 3y. Then we will transform it into the answer. So we have one factor over here and the other one there. In the third case, let's check if there is difference of two cubes. For example, we have this question, x cubed minus 64. So what we are going to check is, we have x cubed, of course, and we have 4 power of 3. Then we can put it into this formula. So we will have a as x and our b as 4. Then we fill it in and we simplify. So we have the first factor is x minus 4 and the second one is x squared minus 4x plus 16. In our fourth case, we must check if there is any square of a binomial. For example, this type. 4x squared minus 20xy plus 25y squared. So this 4x squared can be transformed to 2x squared. And 25y squared, I will transform to negative 5y squared. Because I have a negative here, so I'm going to choose the one with a negative. Next thing is, I'm going to throw this into the formula. So the a will be 2x and the b will be negative 5y. So I will put it inside the formula and I will get 2x minus 5y multiplied by 2x minus 5y. Once I have that, I notice they are the same, so I will write it as 2x minus 5y squared. What if we need to factor polynomials with four terms? Well, there's three methods you can do that. 
Firstly, we can group the first two terms together and the last two terms together. So, for example, I have this. The first two terms, I put it in the pink box and the last two terms, I put it in the green box. So, to do this method, I have to make sure that the ratio of the first two terms, for example, 12 to 9, is the same with the ratio for the last two terms. For example, 20 to 15 is also 4 to 3. So if I can get this ratio the same, then I can factorize it out. So I can find the common factor for 12x cubed minus 9x squared. So I will pull out the common factor which is 3x squared. The balance of the uh, factors will be 4x minus 3. If you notice, it's actually the same with the ratio that we create. So, for 20x minus 15, I can factorize out the 5 and I will get 4x minus 3 too. So, these are the same. We can now factorize 4x minus 3. So, we will bring that out. So, what is remain is 3x squared plus 5. So, I have that behind as the second factor. Let's see this again since this is new to you. Again, I have two sets, the two sets of uh, factors, the one in front, the first two terms, and the last one, the last two behind. Let's check the ratio. For the first two terms, I have 7 to 21, and I will get 1 to 3. And the second one, 2 to 6, the ratio is also 1 to 3. So and now I know that the factors should have that ratio. So I have 7x cubed. I can factor out 7x. So I will, uh, 7x squared, sorry. Then I will get x plus 3. Then for the second part, I factorize out 2 and I'll have x plus 3. So x plus 3 can be factorized out. So what is balanced is 7x squared, I write there, and plus 2, I write here. So my factor is ready. What if we could not group the first two terms and the last two terms together? Well, we can try and group the first three terms together. So for example, if I have something like this, I will try to group them together x squared plus 6x plus 9. Then I will check if it fits any of the theorem that I mentioned before. For example, this one. So for this case, the a can be x and the b can be 3 squared. Okay, so I have b squared here, so 3 squared. So I can change this to a as x and the b as 3, so I will fit into that formula. Next thing is, I see a squared here minus another squared. So, I will think about this formula, a x, a squared minus b squared. So, the a, the part for a is x plus 3, the part for b is y. So, I will change it into this position. So, once that is done, actually, I have already factored this equation. If these first three terms could not work, let's try if it can be grouped in the last three terms together. So, let's say if I have something like this, and I group them together. Same like the case just now, I check which of the theorem that I learned before can fit into this situation. So I will put it down. So my a here, same again, I use x and the b, I will get 3. So it will come like this. Once that is done, again, this look like a squared minus b squared. So I can put this as a as y and my b as x minus 3. So I will put it in the case like this. And my factors is ready. Now, if 
all this that you have learned could not work? Well, we will do the old-fashioned way where we will find one factor and then long division and try to solve the equation. I will talk about that in the next video. Okay, so in part 2 of my video, I will talk about how we can solve all these polynomials by using the theorem that we just learned before. Okay, please subscribe and give me a like if this video is helpful for you. Thank you. See you soon.